we are going to begin talking about forces. So the first thing that we're going to talk about with that are Newton's three laws. Now these are things that you've heard in sixth grade, eighth grade, and I'm assuming before that. So you know the verbiage on all of them. Um, that being said, it doesn't necessarily mean you understand what's going on. So the first law, an object in motion tends to stay in motion um, or rest unless an outside force acts on it. This is usually called the law of inertia. What it does is describes the tendency of all objects, which is to stay in place. I spelled tendency wrong. So the tendency of all objects is to continue in its previous state of motion. To put it another way, mass is stubborn. If something is moving, it wants to continue moving. If something is at rest, it wants to continue staying at rest. It's stubborn. It's sluggish. It doesn't like to change. And, and this tendency not to like to change, we call inertia. So, <clears throat> a little bit of confusion about inertia that you might have. Inertia is the same thing as mass, measured in kilograms measure it in anything. So, um, when we talk about mass, it is a quantifiable, we can put a number to it, way to talk about inertia. The more mass you have, the, the harder it is to change an object's motion. The more inertia you have, the harder it is to change an object's motion. But those two are the same thing. So, first law says mass is stubborn. It takes a force to change the motion of an object. So, no force, no change in motion. We have a force, we do have a change in motion. The second law tells us how forces change motion. So, in the second law, we've got force equals mass times acceleration. Uh, another way to write it is acceleration is force divided by mass. If I apply a force to an object, it's going to accelerate. The more force I have, the more acceleration I have. The more mass that object has, the less acceleration the object has. So a couple of things about this second law. It's referring to a net force. I'm use a sigma sign, sigma f. That means net force or the sum of forces. Net force is all forces on an object added together. So, as a quick example, let's say we have a 10 kilogram block, and I'm pulling on that 10 kilogram block with a force of 20 newtons. Now that 10 kilogram block has a weight from gravity which we'll talk about in a little bit. The table it's on is pushing up with a force, we call it a normal force. And there's a frictional force of 10 newtons pulling it backwards. So if I were to add up all of the forces acting on that block, well the normal force and the gravity cancel each other out, so that's zero. Then we have 20 minus 10. The net force on this object is 10 newtons. Sorry, that force is 10 newtons. That's equal to mass times acceleration. Plug in the mass, we find the acceleration is 1 meter per second. We are going to be doing we are going to be doing some iteration of drawing all the forces acting on an object, finding out what the net force is, and then using that to find the acceleration in most of the problems that we're going to work. Now, for every action 
action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. This is probably the toughest of the three laws to get, even though it's the one that most people seem to remember the most regularly. So, this tells us about um, the nature of forces. That's what this is all about. Number one thing is that forces occur in pairs. Okay. <clears throat> Let's say there's me, who's a stick figure. I'm pushing on a big block. Now, when I push on the block, I apply a force to the block. That is the force of Baker. At the same time, the block applies a force back to me. These are the pairs of forces that are created when we push. As soon as I let go, these force pairs go away. So, anytime that there is a force, two objects are involved two objects or actors in every force. The two objects here are me and the block. So the first one is the force on the block by Baker. The reaction force pair to that is the force on Baker by the block. That's an action-reaction force pair. These will be opposite in direction and equal in magnitude. Now, things get very, very, very tricky the more and more we look at the third law. So that's what we're going to look at next. We look at a very simple situation. Uh, let's say we have a mass of 5 kilograms. It's an easy number for everybody to work with. We take that mass of 5 kilograms and we just drop it. The acceleration of that mass is going to be roughly 10 meters per second squared. So looking at that mass, just having dropped it, the sum of the forces acting on it uh, are the mass of the block times the acceleration of the block. We got 5 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. My net force acting on that block is 50 newtons. Well, we know when we drop something that there's only one force acting on it. It's the force of gravity. So gravity on this block is the mass of the block times the acceleration due to gravity. This is what we call weight. force of gravity is is the weight of the object. Force of gravity and weight are the same thing. Now, looking at what we just said, where forces occur in pairs and there have to be two objects responsible for every force, we have this force of gravity thing. So, with this force of gravity, one of my objects is the block. The question is what is the other object? What is responsible for this force of gravity pulling down on the block? Well, the reason we have gravity is because of the mass of the earth. That's an oddly shaped earth. But the mass of the earth, and it's huge, causes gravity. Gravitational force is, is a field force that things don't have to be in, in contact. They just it's a very complicated force. We will talk a little bit about it. I might show you a demonstration in class. So the force of gravity is the force That makes that object too. 
force of Earth pulling on our mass. The reaction to that, and this is what's a little counterintuitive, is the force of the mass, it's too many S's, force of the mass pulling on the earth. These are my action-reaction pairs. The reason this is hard to believe is because this mass is pulling up on the earth, but it's not doing anything. It's pulling on the earth, but it doesn't seem to have an effect. That's what's hard to believe, and that's okay. The earth is pulling 50 newtons down on a 5 kilogram mass. That makes it accelerate at 10 meters per second squared. That's an effect that we can see. The mass of the earth, sorry about that, the mass of the earth uh, is 5.99 times 10 to the 20, 10 to the 24th kilograms. That's essentially a 6 with 24 zeros behind it. that many kilograms six trillion billion trillion kilograms it's a lot okay five newtons of force sorry 50 newtons of force on six trillion kilograms gives us an acceleration that's really 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 small so yes this mat this mass applies a very tiny force to the earth it doesn't do anything to it the earth applies the same tiny force back to the mass it does change things. It's a hard concept to get into. The other part about the third law that is tough for people, imagine we have a car. Well, let's make it a semi, so it's a big car. It's a truck. Mostly I'm better at drawing semis. Let's say this semi is going 60 meters per second, which is way too fast for a semi and it runs into a bug. Now, the two objects are going to hit each other. The semi is not going to slow down very much and the bug is going to be squashed out of nowhere. Classic question, which experiences a greater force? the bug or the truck. It's our temptation to say that the bug experiences a greater force because its butt becomes its head and that's that's sensible but the answer according to Newton is that they experience an equal force. So let's think about it. The forces on these things have to be equal. Let's say it's two newtons. Two newtons doesn't mean a lot to a big old truck. It has a huge mass and tiny acceleration. The bug, however, has a tiny mass and a huge acceleration. I don't know why I'm doing that. So that force is going to have a big effect, a big acceleration on a small mass we feel the acceleration more. We're going to spend some time talking about this idea and some